Makes you realize how long I've been doing this stuff. 2006. I'm pretty sure Anna likes this more than I do. I just think it's funny to mark a point in time and it was definitely a gift that my grandmother got me. And yeah, I still hold on to it to this day. Today, we do not want to talk about these kinds of gifts though. I want to talk about the stuff that has been some of my favorite stuff to use from 2019. Stuff that's helped me through dinners, stuff that's made my prep a little bit easier or smarter, or stuff that I, like, if I showed up to cook, I wouldn't want to be without. It's also a great time of year to say thank you. I didn't want this to be a sponsored video. I didn't want any sort of brand to have influence on what I talk about in these things. I just wanted to give a couple of shout outs to some people that have either been awesome to me throughout my career here on YouTube, or just ones that I think should be more on your radar because they're making some really awesome stuff. Do this. All right, I think this wants to be two at a time because there's magnets in this. This is of course the jewel from Chef Steps, their award-winning immersion circulator. I'm gonna leave some stats up on all these products uh, just here to the side of me so that I can talk more about how this is to use or how it feels to use this stuff. I think uh, the tech specs can be read uh, in whatever research you wanna do or dig up. I actually didn't want to buy this. I went for a really long time thinking I was not going to get a jewel, not because I was like anti Chef Steps or anything like that. I just had a PolyScience one that I paid, I think like seven or $800 for way back in the day when immersion and circulators were like just starting to hit the market. They were the big bulky black ones with the uh, like blue LCD screen on them. And it was great, it fulfilled its purpose. What I really like though coming to this one is just it removes a lot of the unnecessary. It's definitely a minimalist circulator, not just in its looks, but what you can do with it. I can use like my six quart Le Creuset pot and put this in there and just sous vide a couple of pork chops for Anna and I. Contrast that with the fact that I've cooked for heads of state and government leaders and celebrities with this in different events that I do across the Pacific Northwest. It stood the test of time. Its connection has been mostly reliable. I love the little clip on the back. Uh, most people don't actually show you that this is a clip. I hope you can see that. It's pretty strong and the dimensions are actually really, really great. And the magnet on the bottom, it's such a game changer to have something like this when you can't clip. One hack that I found with mine, and you might like this move, you might not, is to have the, uh, like just binder clips and use these to kind of either hold the cord in place to get it up and out of either the pot or away from the flame. If you're using something to like heat up the water a little bit faster. I don't have a full vacuum sealer. I actually use Ziploc bags for most of my uh, sous vide cooking. And so so I keep clips on the cable here. They aren't color coded for any reason. I think I just had a green one lying around, but this to clip on the side of the pot or the vessel, whatever you're using to cook your stuff, make sure that the water won't seep inside of the bags, which is always never good. I don't really use much of the pre-made recipes or the kind of standard cook times through the app. I'll typically either use a chart that I have for my modernist cuisine research, or I'll just do a quick Google search for temperatures on certain items that I'm cooking, and then I'll use full manual mode on that. Between the app and the blinking light that tells you different things based on colors and flashing, I've never really had any issues with it. There's a bunch of really great colors and these things go on sale pretty frequently. So definitely check the links in the description to see if you got lucky on any of that. Next up on the list, the thing that is right in front of me courtesy of Jewel over here is the, uh, what is this, Gangi number 300. It's their can opener. And I know a lot of people have covered this already. It's kind of a, a internet favorite. It's from Japan, stainless steel blade here. In my mind, this piece of gear is like a oyster shucker or a vegetable peeler. It's one of those items that might seem like a unitasker. It might seem easy to forget or not pack, but when you're doing the task that this is required to do without one of these, you feel like a bit of a schmuck. And just the way that this is designed, it's got kind of like that multi-tool vibe. It's got this angled piece here that you could probably use to tighten or pry something open if you needed to. It's got the can opener on it. It's got that badass brass knuckle kind of feeling like you wouldn't want to get conked with someone like this. I also like that it's very low tech. There's no moving pieces to this. You provide the physical prying motion here with your hands when you're opening the can and that makes it so that this won't ever break. There's no gears turning against each other that are gonna fall apart or get loose after over time. Also comes in red, so of course, and the price is really affordable. So I think that if you're gonna get one of these, you should get two of these, leave one at home and one in your knife bag. All right, next up, let's talk about knives. These are a couple of new ones that have come in from the guys at Town Cutler. Thank you to Town Cutler for always being supportive, being awesome. I actually hopped on a phone call with Galen from Town Cutler before I started recording this to talk a little bit about this one, the newest Desert Dawn collection. This is their eight inch chef knife from that line. 
Hey, what's going on, Justin? What's up, dude? It sounds like How a warehouse in, in this. <laughs> I know, yeah, let me get to my office. No, you're it's always good. fucking loud. <laughs> you're good. This is a line that uh, we came up with. Be a little bit more affordable than our classic line. Uh, it's going to be with Nitro V stainless steel, which is kind of similar to AEBL, but it's got a ton of vanadium in it. Okay. So it's a lot more corrosion resistance. Yeah. Um, you know, no bolster work, no loveless, which we've always done all right. that work. Bolster and loveless, we're doing frame pinning, which I used to do yep. years ago, and uh, we're utilizing a lot of our live edge because we go through so much burl that we have all this scrap, like hundreds of pounds of it. Totally. Um, so we're doing uh, this black resin with live edge, and we've got a little bit of blue metallic flake in there too. Love it. So, someone, Danny of the Chicago store, was like, "You should do like something." you know, inspired by Nevada and it was the summertime and it was like, all oh, these nights are so cool. You know, the mountains are kind of lit up by the moon. Um, the skies are dark and you see these stars. So with like the frame pinning and like the little flake and the resin was kind of like the, you know, night sky of a desert night with the live edge kind of looks like mountains sometimes. No, I it's mean, really wild. it came out really nice. Cause it's like, uh, I don't know. It's almost like exactly where my hand rests, even with like a pinch grip. It's like, there's literally a chunk of burl where like that meaty part of my thumb rests. It's great. <laughs> it's crazy. Like it's gotta be cool to have a sense of place with a knife. I'm doing my best to not turn this into an hour and a half podcast interview, <laughs> uh, which yeah, we fine. will do. But, um, yeah, I think that's all that I needed. Yeah. I'm shooting that video this week. And so expect it to drop in a few days. Cool, sounds good. Cool, man. Uh, we'll say hi to everybody. I hope you have a good holiday. Yeah, you too. All right, and we'll chat soon. Thanks, man. All right, thanks, dude. See ya. Bye. I was telling him it's actually a little insane how the burl on this on both sides actually, like, conforms to where my hand goes. Even that meaty part of my thumb just, like, rests right in there. I think for what Town Cutler provides from a steel and a handle materials perspective, the price point that they're delivering these at is kind of insane. And I think that with the warehouse comes that renewed capacity for them. If you've been putting off getting a Town Cutler knife, I think this line in particular makes it accessible to a lot of people and you're getting an incredible quality for the price. Moving on, this is a new pairing petty utility style knife from them. It's definitely in conjunction with the uh, forced patina one that I've covered on the channel before. This handle is so different and it like I can immediately feel uh, the difference when I'm using this one. I would almost not want to do like board related tasks with this because the way that the handle flares out towards the bottom almost encourages me to choke up on it. So like any little cleaning tasks or even like the beveling from the rep series with the potatoes would be amazing with this knife actually compared to the other one that I had. There is new steel on this. There is new handle materials on this. The spine is beveled, which is amazing. And the attachment looks super clean. The wood is beautiful. I know there's actually a lot of you who have asked about like workhorse reliable chef knives and I've given you other recommendations but I think if you want to have something that's like truly handmade and stands out as a unique piece in your bag you maybe you have a lot of chef knives and slicers and you want something a little bit smaller this is a really really great piece and I couldn't recommend it enough. Staying on the knife train I promised I would talk about some favorites from 2019 and the Aura 2 is absolutely one of those. I know that a lot of you didn't really like the proprietary steel and or the price point behind this guy but when it comes to reaching for a chef knife to just bust out a ton of prep. This is an amazing piece and it's an amazing tool. I've really, really enjoyed working with it. I really enjoy the feel in my hands and the just the look of it. I know they've got a ton of really amazing knives planned for 2020 and so stay tuned for some more stuff through Aura, but I just, I did a whole video on this. I'm not gonna spend too long on it. Um, one thing that I did want to address though is this is from uh, Chef Leather Works on Instagram. They made this for my uh, UX10. I actually decided that it would look probably better on this one, which it, I, I think it does. And so I think if you're the type of person that feels like you have enough stuff in your bag, maybe it would be cool for you to support a small maker during the holiday season and get yourself something to supplement a piece of gear that you might already have. Maybe you can get a rehandle on a knife that you've really, really enjoyed the blade profile of, or just like do something to, you know, take some measurements for your chef's knife and have a, a sheath made for, for them for the holidays. I think that could be a really cool gift that's a little bit outside the box. Moving on. On, we've got another company that's been amazing in supporting the channel and kind of integral in my story. I want to talk about Abe and eating tools. I definitely want to have him back on the podcast again. These are, of course, the... <clears throat> 
tie sticks, not the T-sticks. I'm gonna call these the Iron Man titanium chopsticks because one, Tony Stark would definitely use these if he was eating any sort of food that required these utensils. But if you added even just the tiniest little, like if the second half of these was that candy apple red, it would literally look like it belonged like in his Iron Man suit. The maker is so talented. The attention to detail on these is just incredible. The way that it just balances and how it feels in your hand, the textured tip on these, plus the leather kind of sheath that they go into that just fits so perfectly. These are such an awesome product. They're so unique. And Abe, I, I want to say has a awesome buy one, get a discount deal on these right now. So if you want to go check out eating tools, that's of course linked in the description. I also made a really fun video back in the day learning how to plate with chopsticks if some of you are into doing something like that as a 2020 resolution for yourself. Moving on to another fun piece. I've looked at so many products that Abe has posted in this aesthetic and I've never actually held one in my hand before, but I can tell you folks, the quality on this is just ridiculous. This is like wrought iron handle custom brass pins. The flex on this is just amazing. If you're someone who like has some sort of cheese presentation or if you do a lot of work with twills or if you work front of house and you have a dish that would just be amazing served table side when you use kind of like a flexible spatula to get under something and then like plate it for someone, this is such a game changer of a spatula. And the way that it feels, the quality of it, like no other shop, at least that I've come across, curates tools like this. I just think that the way that the edge is beveled here and the way that the balance is, it's not too heavy in any regard and the way that it just, you can flex it from both sides. I'm like 10 out of 10 going to serve pie off of this on Thursday. There's no doubt in my mind. I forgot about a piece from Town Cutler. This is uh, in this colorway, the Paduk colorway. This is, uh, I've covered this on the channel a million times before and I know a bunch of you have picked these up, but this is a town color offset. I'm actually super happy these guys sent it to me because it is a different, it's different. I feel like every time I get these, they're different. This steel is shinier. The other one definitely has more of a matte finish on it. The way that the angle is like sloped down and out is different too. This isn't coming from a don't buy this because it's not consistent perspective. I literally think they're iterating and improving on every single version or run of these. Can't promise how long it's gonna be available, but just for watching this far in the video, this went up on the shop page as a $5 hauler. So if you wanna go ahead and fill that out, this will be shipping international if you want to get your hands on this. All right, last up, a piece that most of you probably saw lurking in the corner this entire time. I actually apologize it's taken me so long to talk about this on the channel because I lost this for a little while. It was buried in a drawer at our office and I used it for an event. It didn't, I used it so fast that it didn't make it into the Corin JB Prince video that I made after I got back from New York. I used this so fast. And so I have it now, it's back in my possession. This is the Ben Reiner uh, mandolin. It's kind of an industry standard. The one that I have that's made it into most of my videos is this super wide one, and it has the two adjustment points on the bottom. This is hot garbage. You don't wanna have it be where you can have one side be taller than another side, because I don't know where that is applicable. I, I know there's probably like some sort of shave you could make where like part of it curls and part of it's thick, but like, I don't see an instance when you would want two different thicknesses on this. So to adjust them at two different points is very counterproductive to your prep. And so what I like about this one is that it's the smaller one. You can cut your vegetables down to size uh, to fit this. I don't, I haven't really had a moment where I'm like, oh, thank goodness I have the extra inch and a half or whatever this is. Um, it's one single large fatty adjustment point here, which is really, really amazing. It's of course got the side components where you can add uh, supplemental blades to make julienne or larger batons. The thing about it that kicks it though, for me, is this rubber stopper on the bottom. So most of us know when you're working on this, you kind of like use this as a support and to have this where it's just a piece of plastic and could, you know, it's very, very easy to do that. Not so easy to do that. I can't even move it. I'm using the same amount of pressure. So this definitely for me is a significant upgrade. I don't think they've done anything different with the blade, but I'm very, very excited to have this back in my possession to be able to work with this again. I Shout out to everyone who has wanted to do shaved vegetables and forgotten a mandolin, because that's never fun. Yeah, not much else to say. Be safe with your mandolin, folks. But I think that when I think about tools that I really, really enjoy using and I think make it more fun to cook with and allow 
allow me to do more with my food, mandolin definitely falls into that category. So it doesn't just stop at these nine beautiful and sometimes very practical tools that have either come through the studio or have been working with for uh, 2019. I have to talk about my wish list, things that if I got a blank check, I would definitely outfit my kitchen with or I really wanna cook with and play with someday. The first thing I would wish for is a Paco Jet Jr. And I'm sure some of you that are subscribed to JB Prince's email newsletter saw that come through. I don't know where the availability is still at, but those of you that have used a Paco Jet before know why it is as amazing as it is. But the reason that all of us don't have them at home is because of that incredibly high price point on a like regular sized Paco Jet. So to hear that they came out with one that was a little bit more accessible on the price perspective has me really intrigued. And I would love to see some sort of a more in-depth review. I wanna get my hands on one and use one, see if it's actually practical for me to have one and use it at some of the things that I cook. Next up, I have been enjoying Chef Step's new content probably as much as most of you have also been enjoying it. And they featured an oven from their you know, parent company, Breville, in one of their latest videos. And I really, I started doing some research on it. I went down a rabbit hole, smart, oven, it has a convection baking, it has air frying and dehydrating. To have that on my countertop and be able to fire it up as opposed to firing up my gas oven here, or even just having a dehydrator that can function overnight to dehydrate chips would be amazing for Dish of the Day episodes. And if I had to pick one more bonus thing, I know I don't need any more knives. I know you folks give me shit about it, but when I went to the Epicurean Edge over in Kirkland right here, they showed me the blade profile of a knife. So I'm just gonna throw a photo up here. And it's very, very high on my list. It's definitely probably gonna, listen to me, definitely, probably. It's, it might be the next blade purchase that I make. I told the guy at the shop that I didn't really need anything. And he's like, are you sure? Cause have you seen this? And I was like, like, God damn it. I appreciate your folks' attention in letting me get a little bit long-winded and talking about some of this stuff. Uh, I have a ton of gear videos on this channel if this is your first time stopping by. It doesn't mean that I don't recommend any of the other gear that I've covered on this channel. It just means that I have some new stuff that I either haven't covered before or really wanted to highlight and recommend that you either ask for if you're gonna have people purchasing things for you for the holidays or if you're, you know, you got a nice little bonus check and you're looking to treat yourself. Wow, it got very dark in this video. I wish there was a setting where I could turn this to be like fireplace vibes. Got a little candle here, it's fine. And listen, I talk a lot about gear on this channel, but I realize that this time of year might not get some of you excited about receiving physical things. Getting gifts isn't always the thing that floats everybody's boat. And so I think that as we think about supporting different businesses, getting restaurants the love that they deserve. I think the experience of either trying a new spot that you wouldn't have normally gone to or ordering something, whether it's a bottle of wine or a supplemental course to expand your base of knowledge and your experience of food can be just as exciting as a new pair of titanium chopsticks. Thanks for spending time with me in this video. I really hope you have the best holiday season. As I was shuffling around in the toolbox, my little ornament broke and my, my head fell off. So I'm gonna go fix this. My name is Justin Kana. I am so thankful for you folks and your attention, and I hope you have a good one.